Hi, I'm going to walk you through getting started with Avail Harvest today and how it can revolutionize your management of elements that live within an RVT file, such as drafting views and schedules, sheets, system families, everything that you see on this screen here. Uh, I'll go ahead and double click in here. Harvest lets you extract these elements out of an RVT and present them uh, in your channel as individual items, which are previewable, um, taggable, shareable, um, all without even having to have Revit open. So it gives you the benefit of being able to maintain things within a single container file, but present them and share them as individual items. So let's jump over to the manage portal and in the manage portal, which is app.getavail.com under the downloads tab is where you'll find our software. And in addition to the avail desktop and avail for Revit add-in, you'll also want to have the avail harvest for Revit add-in installed. It's a separate add-in for Revit. You can download that. Uh, it supports from Revit 2020 and uh, beyond. And in this case, also Revit 2024 is now supported in our preview release of Harvest, which is version 2.3, which can be found under the preview tab. First things first, we'll want to have a couple channels created and index the RVTs that we want to process. So what I've done is created a channel for my container files and I've indexed those RVTs into here that I want to process. Now I could harvest uh, the elements out of those RVTs directly back into this channel, but one of the uh, recommendations we would make is to separate those out into a different channel, uh, so that way you've got the RVT, they're separated uh, away from the rest of the content that you're looking to share out, unless you also want to share out that source RVT itself, up to you. Uh, and so with that, I've got my container files channel, as I just showed, and then I've created a second channel, which I am just calling our destination channel. This is where our harvested elements are going to go. Next, I'll hop over to Revit. And within Revit, what I'm going to do is start a new uh, project. Uh, it doesn't necessarily have to be a new project, but what you do want to be careful about is making sure that your RVT that you want to process isn't locked by Revit. So if you have just edited that file, then Revit will lock it and we won't be able to process it. So um, good to make sure that that's closed down so it's not locked. And then uh, we'll just go ahead and start a new little file right here. Great. Next, we'll head to the add-ins tab and we'll select Avail Harvest. The first time that you launch Avail Harvest, it's going to prompt you to log in, but once you've logged in, then it should log you in automatically going forward. So now what I'm gonna do is select a channel, and this is where I'm going to find my container files channel so that I can select the RVT that I'd like to process. And I've got here my file, and I'm gonna select OK. And then Harvest is actually going to open up that RVT for processing. So depending on the size of the RVT, it could take a moment for that to open up. Great, that's open now. And you'll see some additional options here. So up next is to select the destination channel. So this is the channel where you would like your harvested elements to be indexed into. So Harvest will automatically index all of these elements right into your channel. So I'll click from the drop down menu and I'll select my very creatively named destination channel. And then next, it's going to ask for a distribution location. So how is this different? So what Harvest is doing is it's taking your source file, your container file, and it's extracting out those elements that you choose to harvest to a distribution location. So in this case, I've selected this um, Harvest demo folder that I've created. And I'll go ahead and bring that location over. So I'm in my Harvest demo folder. And you can see some content that I've already harvested, harvested previously. And what we have here, this is an important consideration as you're getting set up, is it's going to write out these files to a folder, and it's going to create that folder name based on the name of your project. So in this case, it was named you know, New Corporate Headquarters, uh, etc. Uh, and so it created that folder, 
And then within that folder, it's created folders, uh, subfolders based on the element type. So drafting views, families, groups, legends, etc. And then within there, uh, it will be the actual extracted or you know, harvested elements themselves. So this little uh, RVT here, like curb detail, what harvest has done is actually harvested out that and created a kind of miniature, if you will, RVT of just that element. This is actually what gets indexed into Avail and what your end users will be consuming. So that's an important consideration. And I'll go ahead and say here is the temptation can be if you want to edit one of these to come directly here to edit that. But that's definitely not what we, what we would uh, recommend. What you should do when you want to edit or change elements is go back to the source container, edit them there, and then reharvest, And it'll automatically update these extracted elements here. But again, your end users aren't even going to really be aware of this uh, content here uh, because from their perspective they're just in avail and dragging and dropping from there but it's just good for you to know that they're consuming from here um, and this separates it from your container file and the nice side there is that it's small it upgrades quickly um, it's, it loads very fast so I'll go back and uh, close this actually and um, let me just point out, I'll take a step back here and go to the manage and show you under project information, project name is what we're using to create that initial folder. So um, be aware of that. Um, and that's something you want to be a little bit careful about because there is the potential that if uh, the, the same project name and then the same element gets harvested that you do have the potential for overriding there. So just something to be careful about. Either make sure you're writing out to a different location or that you know, you've got a unique uh, project name to make sure you don't overwrite a different project's uh, elements with the same name. We'll go back into harvest. And we'll just select that same file that we want to process to our destination channel. We've got our distribution location. And now you can decide precisely which elements that you'd like to harvest. So I'll just unselect these. We won't do everything right now. Um, but you can see the list of available elements. If one's grayed out, that just means that, uh, you know, that might not be present in that uh, project file, or it might not be a, a type of element that can be harvested, like if it contained, you know, model specific uh, elements or something like that. Um, but I can click the arrow here and drop down and I'll see a full list of my available drafting views that I could harvest. So I'll just go ahead and select uh, a couple of these for harvesting. Uh, you also have groups, detail groups, and model groups. Something I'll let you know about is that um, we'll, we'll see that different um, element types will um, provide different types of thumbnails. It depends on the element type. Um, some are easy for us to get, and we can provide nice high-resolution res, uh, images. Others, Revit doesn't provide a thumbnail for. So I'll walk you through how to create a custom thumbnail in that case. Uh, legends, schedules, uh, that's a good one. I'll grab a, a schedule, I'll grab a sheet. You can see grayed out ones. These would be like with model specific things that we can't uh, harvest. And now uh, view templates we've recently added. So we can do a view template um, as well as families. These will break down even further by, you know, casework, doors, things like that. System families, you can grab wall types, whatever you like. And then materials as well is another more recently added one. So we can find a, a material here that we would like to, um, to bring in. Let's see if maybe glass green might give us a good one. And now once we've selected everything that we want to harvest, we'll hit the start button. Now, uh, the processing time depends on a number of factors. How many elements are you processing? You know, how complicated uh, you know, is, is that element uh, that can add to the processing time? So a sheet with a, a bunch of drafting views on there could take a lot longer than just a drafting view on its own. Um, so be considerate of when you hit the start button for this. Um, if you're doing a really large amount of content, maybe that's something that you just want to set uh, you know, at the end of the day and let that process overnight when you come back and you'll have all this content ready to go. So we'll let this process and then we'll um, take a look.
Okay, we're all complete. You can see here everything is done. Uh, if you have any issues, it'll pop up and it'll let you know that there was an error, if there was a, a, an issue processing um, an element for some reason. Um, but it looks like everything was clean here, so I'll go ahead and say close. And now we'll jump back over to Avail. So now we'll go into our destination channel where we had everything harvested to. And immediately I should see all the content that I had selected to harvest. Uh, and so we've got um, a variety of different content here. When you harvest, uh, it automatically gets indexed into your destination channel. We create a high resolution preview image for that as possible. Uh, and then we also do a layer of tagging, which is important to note. So another good consideration before you harvest is do I want to you know, specify anything else in my Revit tag generator uh, or anything like that to make sure that that gets tagged automatically uh, during the harvesting process. Um, so check out our help center for more information on the Revit tag generator if you're not sure what that is. But this content now is ready to be, you know, dragged and dropped right out of here into, um, you know, a different uh, active project. So if I close this and if I, I'll go add a sheet here. And now because this content is harvested, I could just go find my drafting view, drag and drop this. And this is the nice end user experience that you're looking for. Just uh, users can easily browse and search, uh, find what they want to use, preview it, and then drag and drop it uh, right out of Avail into a new project. So that's the end result that we're looking for. Again, this is uh, previewable right inside of the, uh, the desktop, which is fantastic. Now, a couple other considerations. So you'll see a variety of different things going on here. Um, I've got some nice imagery for my sheets, you know, walls, doors, uh, my drafting views, absolutely. Um, but other things you'll notice like uh, the um, schedule, we've just got the words here. So Revit doesn't provide us with an image for a schedule. So this would be a good time to leverage our custom thumbnail feature. You could do is right click and say open location. And I don't have a, a great schedule image here available, but what I'll do is I'll just grab one, uh, grab an image off of my desktop. And so I've jumped to my location where my um, file was written to, and actually it'd be a good moment just to highlight that again. So you can see I've got a folder now created called Appalachian Wireless Headquarters. In here, all the different subfolders. And then if I go into my schedules, there's that door schedule. Uh, and what I can do is I'll just drop an image in here. And if I give it the same name as my extracted element, then Avail will pick that up as a um, custom thumbnail automatically. Now, when content is harvested, the thumbnails are automatically virtualized, which means it's not pulling these thumbnails locally from my machine, but it's it's being served from uh, our servers. So what I would need to do to update this thumbnail then is go to manage thumbnails, say virtualize. That'll process. Alrighty. And now I'll refresh my channel and I'm seeing this nice virtual image instead. So again, sorry, I didn't have a better thumbnail ready to go or you know, image, uh, but hopefully you get the idea of how that, uh, how that can be um, overridden with a custom thumbnail if you want to. The next important thing I would mention is the location of this content. So as you've seen, this does get written out to uh, you know, a location on your, wherever you've decided. This location should be um, a location that's accessible by your end users, uh, because this is exactly where it's gonna be, you know, when, when I drag and drop something out of a veil, this is where it's gonna be getting pulled from. So it should be accessible by them, uh, unless you're gonna be you know, using a veil host in cloud, then you know, you're pushing a copy of this up to the cloud and that's where they're gonna be downloading it from. Um, so think about that, you know, make sure my users have access to this. And the other thing to think about is that once you've harvested this content, this location 
you know, avail is looking for this content at this location. And so I wouldn't want to then go and rename this or move this to a different location on my network because it would break that connection uh, within avail. So uh, be thoughtful about that. And if you want to update or change the location of your harvested content, you'll need to reharvest it to that new location to make sure that it uh, functions the way that you anticipate. I think that covers the basics for today. Uh, if you have any questions, don't hesitate to reach out to us at support at getavail.com or check out our help center for more information. Um, but uh, dive in, have some fun, and happy harvesting. Thanks so much.